Natsumi seemed insulted because I doubted him. But all the facts pointed at him. I wouldn't blame him if he decided not to talk to me ever again. However, he decided he'd make it up to me. Within the next hour, he showed up at my door. Visibly upset and short of breath, he asked me to listen to him. I'm listening, Katsumi. It has to be something important if you had to come here. It is. I wouldn't have come to the other part of the city in the middle of the night for nothing. I know who's behind the sabotage of you getting into the police academy. Katsumi showed me the timestamp on the email. And told me that it had happened when I had been at his place. The person who did that was the same person who was blackmailing Katsumi. It's obvious the blackmailers won't give up. Until they pull out some more information from me. I'm afraid they're ready to get their revenge on me through my friends. Everything's gonna be okay, Katsumi. They can't do anything to us if we stick together. I knew you'd understand me. I'm not gonna sit and do nothing. I won't let it happen again. I'll do anything they ask me to do, even if it gets me behind bars. Nobody should suffer because of me. What are you going to do? Surrender to the police? No, I'll give them what they want. And what happens next? I don't know. Katsumi was truly sorry for his past mistakes. He was crushed and devastated, mostly because his mistake affected my life as well. I had
had feelings for Katsumi. And it was hard to suppress them and stay mad at him. Will you ever forgive me? Katsumi, I already forgave you. I can't be mad at you. You're so cute. You're joking. No, I'm serious. Disregard the fact you're cute. I expect you to help me. Explain to the Dean I wasn't the one who withdrew my application for the entrance exam. I have a guy for that job. Really? Who is he? I'll send you his number. He's the assistant professor at the college. He's on good terms with all the professors, and he hangs at the campus a lot. He helped me get in. Shady doings again? Katsumi, will you ever change? Probably not. <sighs> Fine. Send me his number. Call him tomorrow and tell him I sent you. He'll help you. Make an appeal for retaking the entrance exam. Thanks, sweetie. What did you say his name was? Tadaaki. Noted. Fine. Can I have a kiss now?
You don't have to ask me that, silly. I expect you to take what you want. Offer accepted. His warm breath on my neck was enough for me. He pushed me to the bed, grabbed my arms. And lifted them above my head. He was lying above me, not letting me move. He moved lower and suddenly slowed down. He kissed me slowly and gently. Totally unexpected. That's better. You're playing dirty. You'll get used to it. My phone was on the bed. When I started getting texts from Rokuro. Katsumi looked at the time and saw it was almost midnight. He couldn't refrain from saying... Is Rokuro always texting you this late at night? No, he usually doesn't text me this late. It could be something important. Okay, we'll see. I'll call him to tell him not to worry. You're in good hands. Katsumi wasn't joking. He called Rokuro and bragged about. Having the situation under control. I was too tired to have a further discussion. I dozed off while the two of them were on the phone. I couldn't remember when Katsumi left. But I was glad I avoided the drama. I called Akiko to keep me company and walk with me.
She attended the college a year longer than me, and she knew how things worked. Besides, she was much braver than me. And she wouldn't mind showing off her attitude. I myself felt confident next to Akiko. Akiko, thanks for coming with me today. You don't have to thank me. You're my friend, and I'll support you always. Same goes for me, Akiko. It means a lot you asked me to come with you. Even though you could have asked your boyfriend to keep you company. I don't think I'd make a good impression. On the assistant or the professor, if I brought my boyfriend with me. <laughs> you think I'd leave a better impression? Me, the loudmouth Akiko? You make me laugh. I believe in you, Akiko. I know you won't say anything that would make my situation even harder. Of course I won't! I'll make sure they don't lie to you or stall. Great. I know all the basics of the bureaucracy at the college. Great. I don't know anything. Tell me, what did Katsumi tell you? What should you do exactly? He told me to make an appeal for retaking the entrance exam. to explain to them where the problem occurred. And to give the appeal to the assistant whose contact Katsumi gave to me. Fine. Do you have everything you need? Yes, no worries. Enough about my problems. Please change the subject. I 
can't do this anymore. Surely, you're the one who has a richer love life than me. We could talk about that. Oh no, you won't get away with that. I helped you with your online date. The least you could do is tell me some new juicy details. Well, I'm afraid I got a bit carried away. It is a long-distance relationship after all. I'm more for that than he is. What do you mean? Is he giving you the cold shoulder? No, he just avoids sending me his picture. I don't even know what he looks like. Oops, it could be anyone. He could even be a woman catfishing. Hmm, no. Oh, I get it. You have no clue. Whether he's cute, handsome, etc. I know the etc. part! Dear God, Akiko. You're impossible. I wouldn't want to be a killjoy, but he could have Dumbo ears. him to meet somewhere. He can't refuse the video chatting and meeting you forever. It's stupid. I'll come out as desperate. Don't say that. Why would you waste your time on somebody who has no time for you? Ask him. Now? You have nothing to lose. That 
That's right! You're here! You could help me come up with something to say to him! Akiko opened chat links and started thinking about... ...what to write to her admirer. I gave her a couple of ideas. But Akiko would stay loyal to herself. She went all in. She had nothing to lose.
and stood in front of the assistant Tadaki's office. I tried to appear calm, but my arms and legs refused to be still. Akiko noticed that. She grabbed me with both hands and made me take a deep breath so I could calm down. Don't panic! You'll appear as insecure that way. You have to show you firmly believe in what you are saying. Easy for you to say, Akiko. I'm new here and nobody's gonna take me seriously. Everything's gonna be okay. You're not alone. If you start stammering, I'll jump in. Deal? Deal. We waited a few minutes more, and Tadaki finally came out of the office. I thought at first that he was a student. But then I heard other students talking to him politely. It was him. Akiko was nudging me. And rushing me to approach him immediately, cause the students left him alone for a couple of minutes. Wait a minute. I didn't think about what I want to say to him. Introduce yourself for starters. Tell him Katsumi sent you. I'll try. I approached Tadaki and tried drawing his attention to me. Cause he was staring at his phone. Hello. I'm sorry for interrupting you. What? The exam's over. When the professor grades the test... The results will be hung on the bulletin board. I didn't wanna... Oh, let me try! Good afternoon, Tadaki! Tadaki looked at Akiko confusingly and turned pale. I almost laughed out loud. Cause I thought Tadaki was afraid of Akiko. He gave Akiko another confused look. And then came to his senses and addressed us.
Good afternoon, girls. Do I know you? I rushed to answer before Akiko. Knowing that she'd say something harsh, as usual. No, but we have a friend in common, Katsumi. Akiko stood back and let me talk. That's right, Katsumi told me you had a problem with the entrance exam. And I told him I'd gladly help you. What do I have to do? If we were to follow the rules, you'd have to write an appeal and submit it to the board. It'd take a month to reach the Dean. And then you'd have to wait for another month to have it revised. I'm here so that appeal finds its rightful place on a shorter note. And that's it? I can retake the entrance exam? I can't promise you that. The only thing I can promise is I'll put in a good word for you. Because I owe it to Katsumi. That's great. Thank you. You should thank Katsumi. If you could excuse me now. Y yes, of course. I gave him my appeal and thanked him again. He glanced at his phone and started walking down the hall. But it seemed that he suddenly changed his mind. Akiko and I were looking at him from a distance and talked about him. He's a lost cause! Why does he seem like a lost cause to you? Maybe he's just busy and has a lot in his mind. Look at him walking! As if he doesn't know where he's headed.
We might look like that too, especially when we bury our heads into our phone. You're no fun when you don't share my opinion. What? Really? Akiko's remark made me laugh and lifted my spirits. I felt a sudden relief. I had a feeling everything was gonna be all right. I'm glad I made you laugh. Yes, everything's going according to plan. Look who's coming! I see. Like the icing on the cake. Like a cherry on top! That's all you need to get lost. You don't need me anymore. My boyfriend was walking towards us, looking straight at me. He waved to Akiko and then kissed me in front of a bunch of other students. It was our first kiss in front of that many people. Akiko started protesting and drawing attention to herself. Hi. Hi, honey. Somebody's in love! Split up! You're not alone! We're not doing anything wrong! Who could mind me hugging my boyfriend? Oops, we made a boo-boo. Forgive us, please. Fine. Do what you want. I'm just saying, professors don't like smooching around in the hallways. Nobody saw us, Akiko. Don't worry.
Okay, you're a grown up. You know what you're doing. If you'll excuse me now, my class is about to start. See you around, and good luck! Call me as soon as you have some news about the appeal. I will. Bye. Bye. What are we gonna do now? That's why I'm here. I wanted you to come with me for a walk. I want to show you a place where I go to find my peace. That's just what I need. Let's go. Something was different. Maybe it was his hand holding mine and the infatuation that overwhelmed me. What made the air warmer and trees greener? I was stunned by the sight of the park. I grabbed his hand and we both ran to the bridge. Come on, don't be slow! Take it easy, girl. We're not in a hurry. I know, but I feel so alive. run across this garden a thousand times. You're in love, Missy. Hmm. I may be, but I'm not the only one. kissed me and chased me down the garden. We stopped in the middle of the bridge. He stood behind me and put both of his arms around my waist. I looked at the calm pond below the bridge and saw our reflection. We made a cute couple. A few koi fish swam towards us and drew my attention. Koi fish brought good fortune. They were a symbol of love, as well as of strength and courage. He took a bag of fish food out of his pocket. And spilled it over the water surface. A school of fish gathered around us. It was a magical sight. No, 
Now you know why I like spending my free time here. I could spend hours watching this pond full of koi fish. They're enchanting! They surely are. The legend says that koi fish swim upstream. And up the waterfall to come to the Yellow River. Where they turn into a dragon. That's what makes them special. I'd never say you were a type of guy who'd spend his days like this. Alone, in the park, lost in his thoughts. It seems like I'm just getting to know you. I have so much to show you, but one step at a time. I want to know more about you. What's the thing that fulfills you? What do you long for? I want to know, so I could give you everything you want. You're full of surprises. Honey, you'll need a goldfish for that. Ahem. Uh -huh. Let's imagine we have a goldfish. Make a wish. to know what you wished for. I'd like to know what your wish was too. I didn't make one yet. I did, and I could give you a hint. Tell me, don't leave me hanging. Look at me. Tell me, what do you see? I see a little devil who stole my heart. Now tempting me to open up to him. It looks like my wish is already coming true. My heart is already open for you, and it's so close to you. my hand and put my palm onto his chest. He let me feel his heart beating faster. He pressed his forehead onto mine and said in a soft voice that the moments he shared with me 
everything he had ever wanted and hoped for. He didn't have another wish. Besides our hearts beating together as one. I closed my eyes and put my head on his shoulder. And I squeezed my hands into his pockets. We shared the love by standing with our arms intertwined, heart to heart. We crossed the bridge and continued walking around the garden. We sat on a bench and kissed, not minding all the people passing by. I suddenly felt him backing off and looking over my shoulder. He kissed me distractedly and confusedly. He was lost in thoughts. Hey you! What's over there that's more interesting than me? What? Who? Nobody! You're strange. Did you see anyone you knew? My mom? No, I didn't. I'm imagining things. Both of our phones buzzed and it distracted us. While I was reading my text, He got up and started saying goodbye to me. It's late. I have to get going. I'm sorry I can't walk you home. You're going? But we could've... Away like somebody was chasing him. Never run after boys, that's what my granny used to say. Akiko was texting me constantly, and I couldn't answer any of her texts. was furious. I scrolled through her text to the end. Oh no!